Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're having a good Sunday. So welcome to part two of the most powerful and easy ways to lose belly fat and enhance your health. Well, part one, we spoke about the importance of water and we spoke about how even a 1% drop in your hydration levels in the human body can impact your hormonal balance and can impact your, your ability to lose weight and how you put on and gain fat. Well, today, part two, I'm going to talk about a subject which is very, very close to my heart. It's one of the most important verticals in health. It's one of the most important parts of building strong immunity and a strong body. It is one of the most critical elements when it comes to building a great body and losing weight. One of the most important aspects when it comes to burning fat. What I'm going to talk about today is something that I need you to understand. Because we all have access to social media which tells us something that's good for our body, something that's good for our mind, something that's bad for our body, and something that's bad for our mind. We all know it. It's out there. There's so much of information out there. But I believe that when we understand the science or the logic behind the things that we should do, we do it better. Like all of us have a shelf life of motivation levels. But when it's driven by passion and by knowledge, we're able to stay self-motivated and we're able to inspire ourselves every day to stay healthier and lose weight. As you know, weight loss is not just about the food that you eat. It's not just about the exercise that you do. We have so many people that we know that eat healthy and they exercise intensely and yet they cannot burn that belly fat. It's not about that. Weight loss is about <clears throat> hormonal balance. Weight loss is about communication between every one of those billion cells in your body. When you have the right communication between those cells, your cells have the right energy. When your cells have the right energy, they have the right balance. When your cells have the right balance, you have great health. When you have great health, you achieve your ideal weight automatically. That's how weight loss works. That's how fat loss works. Well, the second tip today that I want to talk about and make you understand, so this is going to take a little more time, but I'm going to explain it in detail. It is sleep. Sleep is the most important part of your health paradigm. Now, I'm not talking about seven to eight hours. We all know that seven to eight hours of sleep is what is recommended, and we all know that we need that amount of sleep to have a healthy body and to lose weight. But today, we're going to focus on understanding why seven to eight hours, and if it's not seven to eight hours, will five hours of sleep actually do the trick in your body? Number one, the University, the University of Chicago actually released research showing that 55% of your body fat can be accelerated when you rest and have the right amount of sleep. Now, when I say the right amount of sleep, I'm not talking about seven to eight hours. I'm talking about seven to eight hours of quality, deep sleep. It is quality over quantity. You could have five hours of sleep, but your five, five hours of sleep is so deep that it is sufficient to enable all the hormonal balance and functioning in your body. So the University of Chicago did this case study where they took a group of people that slept for seven to eight hours and ate a normal calorie diet. And then they put the same group through restricted sleep of four to five hours. And they found out that group one could lose anywhere between 50 to 55% more body fat just by having quality and quantity sleep. That's it for numbers. But let's go and see how your brain works when, <clears throat> in relation to sleep. <clears throat> when you sleep, a very, very important hormone that I've spoken about before gets produced. It's called your human growth hormone. Human growth hormone stimulates lean mass. It stimulates muscle in your body. If you have more lean mass and you have more muscle in your body, you have less fat. When you have more lean mass and you have more muscle tone, you enable the human body to burn calories throughout the day. Because lean mass and body muscle tone, your body tone requires energy to hold that muscle definition in place. Now, I'm not talking about big buff muscle. It could be something as simple as lean muscle, body tone. It requires energy to stay in place. Where does it get that energy from? By burning calories every single minute of the day. So when you carry lean mass, which is produced by human growth hormones, no amount of protein intake and exercising can lead to muscle growth without human growth hormone. 
human growth hormone is energizing and healing to the human body and cell. So when you're sick, if you have insufficient human growth hormones, guess what? You cannot heal. You inhibit healing. Human growth hormone is produced when you have quality sleep. You have to reach a certain depth of your sleep cycle in order for your, for your glands to produce human growth hormones. Stanford University has released research where even one day of disrupted sleep, a 24-hour period of disrupted sleep is enough to suppress a hormone called leptin. Leptin is your satiety hormone. It signals to you, it signals your brain when you are full. Now, if you have leptin, which is suppressed, you will go on eating and eating and eating and eating. And I'm sure all of us have experienced that phase where we just can't stop eating. That's because leptin, which is a hormone, which is your satiety signal to the brain, is suppressed when you have even one day of disrupted sleep. Another hormone gets accelerated when your sleep is disrupted, and that is called ghrelin. Now, ghrelin is your hunger hormone. It is what leads to cravings. It is what makes you hungry. It is what signals your brain and your body to eat more. So now you have less of leptin, which is your satiety hormone, and you have more ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone. And that's why you go on eating. You have no control over those cravings. It's like a drug addiction. You go on eating and eating and eating, and it's a vicious circle. It depresses you because you're eating so much. Because it depresses you, your cortisol goes up because you're stressed. And cortisol has an impact on your ability to lose weight. Chronic levels of high cortisol makes your body store fat. And that's another hormone which gets affected when you have disrupted sleep. Cortisol. And cortisol has a shocking effect on your inability to lose weight. You cannot burn fat when your cortisol levels are chronically high. <clears throat> so now let's come down to quality and quantity. It's not about how long you're in bed. It's about how deep your sleep is in bed. We all know people who sleep for seven hours, eight hours, nine hours, and yet they wake up tired. We, know, we all know people who exercise intensely and they eat a great diet, and yet they struggle to lose belly fat. It is because you have improper sleep. And you have a hormonal imbalance of leptin, ghrelin, and cortisol. And when you have high cortisol, you have low tyroxine. If you have low tyroxine, you put on weight or you find it difficult to lose weight. So you see, it is all about hormones. You can up your gym workout in intensity to two hours or three hours. You can have salads and organic foods throughout the day. But it will not help your weight even budge a bit if you don't have the required amount of deep quality sleep. I'm talking about that phase of sleep where you reach your deep anabolic stage, where you have your delta waves initiated in your sleep. That cycle is so deep. We have different phases of our sleep, and each phase is correlated to a particular function in your body. These functions range from regeneration of cells, the growth of cells, the repair of cells, the healing of cells, hormonal balance. All of these happen at different phases in your sleep. So if you have disrupted sleep, you disrupt the functions of these cells and hormones and you will not be able to lose weight, you have low immunity, you wake up tired and when you have disrupted sleep, it triggers off irritability, it triggers off cravings, it triggers off fatigue and brain fog and we wake up tired, we think we're hungry, we eat more food, we have no control over our cravings so we start eating sugar because sugar gives us the quickest fix, foods with salt gives us the quickest fix and then we raise our insulin levels, we have a crash, and we eat more and more and more. All because we have disrupted sleep. While you sleep, a very important organ in your body regenerates and heals. Your liver. Your liver repairs and regenerates its cells and enzymes while you sleep. And your, your liver is your main organ when it comes to fat metabolism. If you have a slow and sluggish liver, it is very, very difficult for you to lose weight, no matter how much you exercise and how clean you eat. Now, all this regeneration and regrowth of cells happen while you sleep in your liver. So if you have improper sleep, you have a sluggish liver. If you have a sluggish liver, you cannot heal from a disease. You cannot prevent a disease and you cannot lose weight effectively. Now let's come to your brain. Your brain works every microsecond of the day for you. Your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, decision-making, deciding, analysis, all of that stuff 
Have you ever wondered how your brain detoxifies itself? The human body detoxifies itself through your lungs, your skin, your liver, your colon, and your kidney. And you have a lymphatic system, which is your body's garbage disposal system. Your lymphatic system carries lymph and fluids and wastes out of your body. Now, your lymphatic system doesn't work for your brain because it's separated by a blood-brain barrier. But the brain has its own detoxification system called the G lymphatic system or the glymphatic system. Now, look at the intelligence and the beauty of the human body. The glymphatic system works by flushing and pumping your brain with a cerebral spinal fluid that has the ability to flush out debris and toxins from your brain into your circulatory system in the body, which eventually reaches your liver, and your liver eliminates those toxins. Now, while you sleep, your brain cells shrink by almost 50 to 60 percent, making space between your brain cells so that the cerebral spinal fluid can do its flushing and cleansing job. Between this space, your brain cells actually shrink flooded with cerebral spinal fluid that flushes toxins and debris out of your brain into your circulatory system to your liver and eliminated. Now guess what? This, G, this G lymphatic system and the shrinkage of your cells gets activated almost 8 to 10 times while you are asleep. So if you have disrupted or less sleep, you are interfering with the detoxification process of your brain. Now let's talk about Alzheimer's for a minute. Alzheimer's, the, basically the protein molecule, which is a myeloid beta, which is found in the brain of Alzheimer patients, it gets dissolved and removed by the cerebral spinal fluid while you sleep, which means the more sleep you have, the more you can detoxify this protein molecule, which is found in the brain of almost every single Alzheimer or dementia patient. Plus, your brain needs space between the cells to detoxify, heal, grow, regenerate. So right from your memory to your mood swings to your emotions, everything to do with your brain requires detoxification just like your physical body. And that happens while you sleep. It gets activated. So coming back to your brain again, let me talk about this hormone called melatonin. Now, melatonin has innumerable important functions in the human body. Let's talk about its first function with weight loss. You have something called brown adipose tissues. These tissues are usually found on your chest area, your upper shoulder, above your clavicle, and the back of your neck area. Adipose brown tissues basically help you burn fat from the white tissues. Your white fat tissues is the ugly fat that we're all looking at burning off. Some of us call it cellulite, some of it hangs on our butt, in the wrong places, around our abdomen, below our arms. Those are called white fat cells. Now your brown adipose cell tissues actually do not, they do not store calories like your white adipose tissues. They use energy to burn down your white fat tissues. So if you have sufficient amount of brown adipose tissues, you enable the human body to actually burn white fat. Now, if you have less melatonin in your body, you have less levels of adipose brown tissues. But when you have the right amount of melatonin and your brain produces melatonin every time your body prepares to sleep, and this melatonin is, pr is produced from the time you start feeling sleepy through the deepest phases and cycles of your sleep. So if you have disrupted sleep, Lack of melatonin impacts your ability to burn fat. You see, your body has its own mechanism of burning fat, and it's not just exercise or eating a diet which is rich in nutrients. It is also using hormones okay, to generate the right fat cells, like brown adipose fat cells, which can help burn the unnecessary fat that the body has no use of, the fat that we all try to get rid of. The second connection with melatonin, melatonin is a very, very powerful anti-cancer hormone. If you have less melatonin, melatonin, let's put it this way, your cells require melatonin to prevent cancers from spreading. Basically, melatonin can cut blood supply to tumors. So basically, you know, each tumor to grow needs blood and needs nutrients from your own system. 
And if you have the right amount of melatonin, melatonin can actually come in the way of this blood supply and actually stop a tumor growth. The right amount of melatonin also leads to cell apoptosis, which is cell death. Now, a cancer cell should, by default, kill itself. That's how immunity works. But since it's become so intelligent, cell apoptosis, which is cell destruction, is impossible and the cancer spreads. But with the right amount of melatonin, which is so important in the healing and prevention of cancer, your immunity requires that level of melatonin. Now, let's talk about melatonin. Every time, you know, the sun sets and the moon rises and the light around us changes. I'm not talking about artificial light. I'm talking about natural light. Your brain gets a signal to start producing melatonin. It is melatonin that helps you get into your deeper cycles of sleep. So now if you are going to be looking at, you know, a television or your iPad or your iPhone at a gadget that is artificially stimulating your brain cells not to produce melatonin, that's one of the biggest causes of insomnia today. That's one of the biggest causes of us not being able to fall asleep because we are disrupting melatonin, the hormone that puts us to sleep. And then no amount of sleeping pills will help you. Sleeping pills are detrimental for your health. They induce sleep within 10 to 15 minutes of taking it, so you feel that it's working for you. But it's induced it because it's tricking your brain through its chemical composition to put you asleep. And you may not sleep eight hours, you'll have a few hours of quality deep sleep, but it is disrupting your hormonal balance, which is why you need more and more and you finally get dependent on it. And it doesn't make you feel better. Anyway, some people need it, some people don't. That's a whole different subject. But melatonin gets produced. Now, how can we generate good melatonin? Because we know that if we have less melatonin, we are going to pile on belly fat. We are going to find it in, impossible to burn belly fat if we have less melatonin, if we have less sleep. We need to make our place of sleep a sanctuary. It needs to be so dark that that darkness stimulates more melatonin production in our brain and we're able to sleep and go into all our phases of sleep in a natural manner. So I'm talking about disengaging from electronic gadgets at least 30 to 45 minutes before sleep. I'm talking about having dim lights in your bedroom. I'm talking about keeping your cell phone, no television, nothing that, re that even emits EMF, electromagnetic frequency, because that disrupts melatonin production. I'm talking about reading or communicating or talking or telling your kids bedtime stories or meditating before you sleep to prepare your brain to produce melatonin to put you to sleep. That's how it works. That's how nature works. All these bright lights, I call it light pollution. Light pollution is causing us nights of endless sleep. You know, you have this bright light shining in from your window or you have these lights on in your room or you have, you know, your phone buzzing and all of these electromagnetic rays, it disrupts your sleep. The University of Cornell did this research and released this paper where, where they stated that even a coin-sized fiber optic light kept anywhere in your room, not even in direct sight of you, can disrupt your rapid eye movement, the depth of your sleep. So you want to make your room as dark as possible. Use night blinds, use heavy curtains, and make it your sanctuary because everything to do with your health and weight loss revolves around how deeply you sleep. So when it comes to sleep, this is the most powerful tip when it comes to immunity healing, which is why you see when you're sick, you feel like sleeping. Your body automatically starts producing more melatonin. It wants you to sleep because when you sleep, you rest. When you rest, your body can recover. Why do you wake up with a smelly mouth? Why do you wake up with dirt between your eyes? Why is your first urine of the day so acidic and so warm? It signifies that there was a detoxification process that happened while you slept. All the men out there, your beard only grows while you, while you sleep. It doesn't grow during the day, signifying that all growth and hormonal balance happens while you sleep. So if you're compromising on your sleep, if you have disrupted sleep, you have a hormonal imbalance. You are interfering with the growth, regeneration, repair, and hormonal balance of the human body. And everything to do with good weight loss starts from hormonal balance. Now, it doesn't work for you to say that, okay, I'm going to sleep for 15 to 16 hours on the weekend, or I'll make up for my lost sleep on the weekend. Unfortunately, it is not cumulative in nature. Every microsecond of your day, your body is running processes and functions that requires melatonin, human growth hormones, the right amount of leptin, the right amount of ghrelin at every second of the day. So your body's not going to stop its functions with you deciding to you know, make up for your sleep on the weekend. 
It's a cycle. It happens every second of the day. So you need to sleep when you have to sleep. You need to be awake when you have to be awake. Now, six hours, seven hours, eight, or eight hours, what's the best for you? It's easy to generalize and say seven to eight hours. But I have seen people who sleep for five hours, but they sleep so deeply that they're fine for the rest of the day. So I would advise you, my personal advice is listen to your body. Listen to the biofeedback that your body's giving you. If you wake up tired, you need more sleep. If you're yawning throughout the day, you need more sleep. And remember, we have stimulants like Red Bulls and caffeine, which can give you that false sense of energy, making you believe that you slept enough. Enjoy your coffee, but be mindful that you still need pure energy at a cellular level to come from the right amount and the right quality of sleep. So a lot of us move on from one coffee to another, one Red Bull to another, one stimulant to another, thinking that, oh, I have energy. You don't have energy. It's the caffeine that is giving you a false sense of energy. Your cells are deprived of the energy it needs to heal, repair, and enable your hormones to help you lose weight. So in today's world, the easiest decision to make is sacrifice sleep. Sacrifice sleep to build a great career. Sacrifice sleep to build a great business. Sacrifice sleep so we can study and get those grades to get into Yale and Harvard or some American university. Sacrifice sleep to unwind and enjoy ourselves because we have other voids in our life that we don't want to look into and fill it the right way. We sacrifice sleep to fill emotional voids with late night parties and all of that stuff. See, I'm not against all of these things, but, the, but it's time that we start getting real with ourselves and questioning our intentions behind everything we do, behind that binge drinking, that binge partying, all our bad food qualities, this, this virus called society that makes us eat out and socialize and compromise sleep in the name of society, in the name of being social, in the name of wanting to be accepted in society because we need to be who we are not. We sacrifice sleep and we sacrifice our health. This is the most important aspect of weight loss and health. Start investing in good sleep. And I know we'll have innumerable excuses. We'll have excuses to blame our organizations, our work, our families, all of that stuff. But an excuse is an excuse. If we really, really put an intention behind fixing this, we'll find how we can get an extra hour of sleep. We'll find how we can get two hours of sleep. We'll find how we can get even 30 more minutes of sleep into our day. Most of our time goes on social media, TV, unnecessary socializing unnecessary socializing and when you really get real with your life you look inside find your spiritual balance you meditate visualize pray whatever it is that makes you realize who you really are you find out exactly where your time is being wasted and now you invest that time into something that's going to give you a long happy healthy pain-free life and that is sleep now i shouldn't miss out this point there are many of us who work night shifts People in the police force, people in call centers, people in offices, people who travel, pilots, air hostesses, so many people, doctors, you know, they can't have, they can't honor, they cannot respect the day-night cycle of sleep because of their profession. My only tip to you is when you sleep during the day, make sure your room is so dark that it mimics the effect of night. Let me give you an example of moonlight. It's called a luminance factor. Moonlight is also light, but the luminance factor is low. It is that exact luminance factor that produces melatonin. So the sun sets, the moon rises, melatonin starts getting produced, we sleep. It is artificial light, like from your phones and TVs and all these bright fancy lights. And you should know there's a reason why Las Vegas has all these lights. Casinos have so many lights because it doesn't want the gamblers to get tired and go home. Every casino pumps in fresh oxygen in casinos every 15 minutes to keep you awake and bright artificial lights to keep your melatonin levels at the lowest so that you stay longer and you gamble more in casinos. Yes, there's a business angle to everything. I call it light pollution. So make sure that you invest in your sleep. Okay, now a lot of us will say, oh, I, I cannot sleep. Yeah, we cannot do many things. We cannot eat right, we cannot exercise. You need to change that word to I can and I will try because when you start looking, you will find a way. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.